everyone for coming to Where's She Wednesday. I'm so excited. Um, not only because we get to talk to Vernica, but also because my my uh, brain is just very excited to be in Turks and Caicos right now and learn everything about it. So thank you, thank you so much, Vernica, for joining me today. Could you okay. maybe tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started? Okay, so first of all, I would like to say welcome to the Turks and Caicos, everyone. <laughs> So yes, my name is Vernica Delancey. Um, I live in the beautiful Turks and Caicos Islands. I am a native of the Turks and Caicos Islands. I've been in real estate for the past 15 years, and I am currently a team leader at Keller Williams TCI, and I'm also a real estate agent. And I'm so excited to be here to share about the Turks and Caicos Islands today. Oh, I love it. Um, and that, that's tough. So, okay, I have to know, because in my mind, Turks and Caicos is where I go on vacation. And it's, you know, it's not where you live because it's vacation. But obviously many, many, many people live there. So who is moving to Turks and Caicos? Well, um, there's um, a mix of nationalities that are moving to the Turks and Caicos and they are mm -hmm. coming from Caribbean islands. But most of all, we have persons who are coming from the UK, Canada, and the US, with the majority coming from the US and Canada. Is that because we all want warmer, better weather? <laughs> That's because we have warmer weather, but also there's a number of factors. Um, for example, um, we have a lot of people coming here for the weather. It's um, direct flights say to Canada, we have direct flights that goes um, from Canada to US, places like Fort Lauderdale, Chicago, New York, New Jersey, and it makes it much easier for travel. Also, there um, are other factors in terms of, um, it's a great spot for retirement. A lot of people come here to have their wedding. Um, and most of all, mm -hmm. the beaches are very beautiful. And that's the number one reason a lot of people decide to come here to vacation as well as to stay, right? So yeah, that's why we get a lot of people from there. And I'll say this also, we also have persons who come from, because you talked about the weather, even for medical mm -hmm. reasons, we've had customers who come here, okay. they say, hey, that because of what's going on with me, it's easy, I mean, for medical purposes, I feel much better when I'm in a tropical climate than when I'm actually in a cold climate. So they spend the summer months here and then I mean the winter months here and then they go back home for the summer months. You know, that is fascinating. Um because sorry, there's a I delay. Mean, I feel like I would probably be yeah. less crabby. Say that again. No, I'm saying sometimes I'm pausing because there's a delay. So please forgive me if I pause once or twice, but yeah. You're okay. Actually, so somebody just joined and they have a question. They're not going to stand for long. So I want to get to this question before they go. So they're asking in order to, I'm assuming in order to purchase there, what do you have to do in order to become a citizen? Or actually, can you purchase without being a citizen? Yeah. Frank, is you that your Yeah, you can purchase without becoming a citizen of the Turks and Caicos, definitely. So, and when it comes to purchasing, the same rules and regulations that applies for me as a non, um, as a resident applies for you. I like to say that because some people think that the requirement is different. It's not. So once you've identified the real estate that you're looking to purchase and you have the funds to do so, you can make a purchase here and you will receive freehold title. Okay, perfect. Um, Frank, if that didn't answer your question, let me know. And I can also put the two of you in touch, which is obviously wealth of knowledge. But if you don't get all of this, uh, or if you can't stay for all of this, make sure you two are talking. Um, okay, so I want to go back to the lifestyle of living there. Uh, what really is the lifestyle? I mean, it's all beaches. Are there a lot of forest there? Is there a lot of outdoor hiking, things like that? Or is it more like a Caribbean lifestyle? Okay, because you talk about a lifestyle, if it's okay, I can just, I would like to share my screen just for a little bit. So while we're having a conversation, we can share a video that the tourist board recently put out, you know, welcoming people back to the island, telling you the country's open. I just wanted to play in the background just for a little bit while we talk yeah. and then I'll take off the screen too. 
so people will see what we're talking about. If you know me, you know I love a, a screen share. I love a good screen share. <laughs> So you guys are open now, that's so, wonderful. So yeah, we are open for business. I'm hoping it's spinning. Yeah. So I just want them to see this is Turks and Caicos with the beautiful water and everything else. So um, yeah, so you were asking about what is there to do in the Turks and Caicos Island. Well, most people come here, like I said, because of the beaches and you saw a photo just now, we do have white, pristine, sandy beaches miles and miles of it. So that's one of our big things um, that attract people to come to the Turks and Caicos Islands. And um, what else is there to do? Of course, persons come for their wedding and they have a lot of um, family time. We also have a lot of um, um, private keys that a lot of persons will go to, um, like mm -hmm. um, Iguana Island to visit the indigenous iguanas. And most of all, we have a lot more water sport activities. We have parasailing, we have kayaking, we have um, just going out on a boat trip for a day, you know, um, also um, we're showing up properties moving a bit fast, but Northern Middle Caicos, they are sister islands. What you can do is go off for a boat ride to this morning, come back the afternoon, and you can explore the island of Northern Middle Caicos. These are just some of the things you can do. Um, every island is unique. Remember, the Turks and Caicos Island is a chain of islands. So mm -hmm. every island has its own dynamics that attract people to it. For example, Grand Turk is the capital. It has more Bermudan, st Bermudan style homes from the earlier settlers and it shows more of the history of the island with the salt ponds, et cetera. Um, North and Mill Caicos is referred to as the Green Islands. And that's where a lot more of the agricultural side of things happen, but they also mm -hmm. have a lot of historical elements for example, um, the way to implantation, and it has a huge, one of the largest cave systems. Mujan Harbor is a big attraction for mm -hmm. tourists and residents alike. So that's a um, big thing. Um, salt Key is very, um, very good for the whale watching. So the migration of whales. So from January to, I believe it's about March or so, um, we have a lot of people come to the island just to do whale watching. So, you know, every island is different and there's so many things to do. And if you're on Prado, of course, like I say, there's water sporting activities. You have a number of beautiful beaches to um, choose from. And um, also you have a lot of fine dining restaurants. We have nightclubs that you can also go to. So um, that's in a nutshell, what is there in the Turks and Caicos Islands to do? So um, I can unshare my screen. Sure, that I have to tell you that's pretty amazing. I, um, we're now in a world where so many people can work not from home, right? They're working from, or sorry, they are working from home, not in the office. And I think that it's, I'm really happy to have you on right now because what a beautiful space to work from home. Right, and then go and enjoy the beaches and enjoy being outside. Um, and if I remember correctly, your your whole tax situation is a little bit better than ours. Is that correct? The tax situation? You, you, you don't have income taxes, right? No, no, we don't. Sorry, yeah. No, I was just making sure because I wasn't sure what you said. No, we do not have property taxes, nor do we have income tax. And because you say that, the government actually just did an initiative just yesterday um, mm -hmm. with our stamp duty. So first let me explain that um, on all real estate transactions, you will pay mm -hmm. a one-time stamp duty fee, okay? And okay. Um, so there is a rate based on the um, cost of the real estate that you're purchasing. And so yesterday the government um, provided a stamp duty waiver where if you are purchasing any real estate up to a price point of $2 million, you between now and the end of October, you get a 75% reduction on your STEM duty rate. And then Whoa. that's a big, right. And then also um, from October to November, 
it's a 50% reduction. And from November to December, it's a 25% reduction. So even though the amount of percentage goes down till the end of the year, it's extended from now until December. So that's a big savings for anyone who's looking to purchase right now. So, I mean, and that's the same as, you know, if people are buying in um, many countries, right? There's usually a stamp tax that you pay when you start. Um, and what a great savings. Guys, if you're thinking about Christian Kinkos, now is the time. Um, and we're going to get into the points and all of that. I'm curious, though, what, what is the stamp tax? What is that percentage? So it's based on the purchase price. So, for example, mm -hmm. anything... Um, up to $250,000 is a 6.5% tax from 250 mm -hmm. to $500,000, 8%, and from 500 and up, it's a 10% tax. So okay. a 75% savings on high-end luxury property is a great saving. And I also want to point out, um, if you're going to be on any of the sister islands that, that I mentioned earlier, like Salt Key, Grand Turk, North Caicos, no, a middle caker, south cakers, it's, it's a even lower rate. So it's actually up to 100,000 is, is 5%. And anything from 100,000 and up is only 6.5%. So if you oh, have wow. a investor who wants to be on one of the outer islands, um, you have even a better deal when it comes to STEM duty. And also that 75% applies on that great rate already. Wow. This is, this is fascinating. I love this. Um, okay. So how about financing? Let's say I want to purchase something there, but I would like to finance it. Do you know roughly how much they'll finance? Will they even finance something for me? How would that work? Yeah. So basically when it comes to financing, um, we have a number of banks that will do financing to non-residents. Uh, mm -hmm. Most times that person has to come up with a 30% deposit and then the bank will finance the rest. Of course, okay. uh, we always said it's subject to your credit score and credit history, but that's um, just around like a standard what the banks are asking for. You, we also have a number of mortgage companies that's not related to the banks that you can also get um, a mortgage from most times it's a 50% down you have to come up with okay okay if you're gonna deal with a mortgage company but the banks will have well can allow up to 30% down 30 to 35% down okay and then what are interest rates like there interest rates is always a difficult question to ask, answer because <laughs> most banks do not like to give their interest rates because they want to be competitive. So they don't really um, tell you upfront what the interest rates are. But I know Ooh. for a fact that interest rates have decreased since COVID-19. Um, interest rates have decreased and they are giving competitive rates at this time. So I do have in mind, I mean, as a realtor, I do know some of the rates that they um, offer, but I do not want to share those rates because like I say, the bank don't give out their rates and it's on an individual basis and based on what's going on at a time in the market, okay? That's but they so do have reduced rates at, interest rates at this time, yes. So could you just maybe tell me range, are we thinking in like the three to six range or are we looking in like the 10 to 15 range? So if the banks, uh, most times you're looking more like, um, yeah, let's go with three to six. Those are okay. the numbers you suggested, yeah. But if you're going to go to mortgage company, you're looking at a higher interest rate than that. Okay. Yes. Awesome. That's so fascinating. I, it's like very tri tricky, right? Very sneaky of the banks. <laughs> no, can I can understand. Can you compete between banks? Sorry, can you? Can you compete within banks? Like, can you go to one bank and say, oh, I got a five interest rate here, and I'm going to try with this one? Or do they just not tell you the price until you commit? No, um, I know that um, um, definitely, I know one of the banks have said that they do compete. If you come to them with an interest rate, um, they will be the interest rate. Yes. Okay. Fascinating. Okay, so now let's dig into these homes. Right, so what is like a typical size of a home? What is the typical price point of a home? 
Yeah, I want to learn more about the real estate aspect. Okay, so I'll say this, the Turks and Caicos Islands is actually, um, you know, a destination that we do have a lot of second home buyers, okay? We have a lot of persons who come here and a lot of them focus a lot more on condo ownership um, because it's on Grace Bay, you know, so it's on Grace Bay and also, um, I don't do well with distractions. <laughs> It's all, it's just like something is moving on the side, sorry. It's on this gray bay, and so a lot of our buyers are interested in this. I want to start with the condos first before I talk about the homes, right? Okay. So a typical um, square footage, just for example, of a one, um, one bedroom home, um, you can have anything around, say, like a, a thousand square foot. If you're going to be like a studio unit, you could be like 400 to... 400 to 500 square feet, right? And of course, the prices will determine based on if it's a beachfront resort, if it's back on beach or and the likes. So just generally, you can find a studio unit, anything around 200 to $300,000 could be a studio. And again, it all depends on the caliber of the um, development. So for example, Seven Star Resort is a, um, is a seven star, five star resort here. So a studio may be around the same square footage, but at the same time, it will be like 500,000 instead of 300,000. So because we talked about that, you know, some of the per square foot, we're looking at if you're in the Grace Bay area for most places, you, you can be around $10 an hour per square, per square feet. All right. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, typical homes, uh, most of them are basic homes are more like a thousand square feet. And of course, oh, okay. if you're going to be more in the luxury area, then of course you're going to be more square footage than that all depending on how many bedrooms and what's the purpose of the, of the, of the home, like for short term rentals or if it's just for regular li living accommodations. So I would have to assume that a lot of people that use these as a second home also rent out. Is yes. it easy to do that there? Yes, a lot of persons who do as a second home, what they do is like they, um, they use it in the months where when, we, when there's not a peak, when the peak season, uh, when we're not in the peak mm -hmm. season, they would come and use their condos or their homes. And um, so that it can be rented better during the peak season. Yes. So that's what most of them do. And that helps them to pay their monthly maintenance fees as well as help them in regards to getting any sort of return on investment at the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah. You're so getting a lot of that's what persons do. They do rent out their condos or their villas. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just Sorry. wanted to let you know you're getting a lot of kudos on Facebook. But thank, thank you everyone for tuning in. Send your questions. Isn't she great? Um, so, so, okay, so second home, you can rent out. What is, I have two questions from what you said. First one is what, let's say I have a thousand square foot home. What's going to mm -hmm. be my monthly cost? Um, let me say this. When it comes to homes we do not have like um hoa fees for regular single family development homes because just say we have you have free hotel you have the right to build what you want on your land so you don't have any associated costs however if you're going to be like in something like a town home okay so you may have around about like you say a thousand or twelve hundred square foot Depending on the development, you could be looking at approximately for a townhome, like $550 to $600 a month for your monthly maintenance costs. Okay? okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, like a townhome. The, and it's then, about, go ahead. Oh, no, please. No, I was going to say it's a little different when it comes to the condos compared to, so the, the, the cost might be a bit higher because of the, I mean, the condos compared to a townhome. What would it what would it be on average of a uh, condo for a thousand square foot unit? So if you're going to be a thousand square foot, um, you can well be up to about um, eight hundred dollars easily per month um, compared to a townhome. Okay, and then what would 
the rental prices for both of these fees? Uh, rental prices. Um, so if you want to short, I mean, vacation rental your property, um, I can't, it's not easy giving an exact amount because in the Turks and Caicos, I always say it's, we don't have apples with apples. We always have apple with oranges. So each development is so different. And most times you have to dig into that resort, that development to be able to come with conclusive numbers. Okay, so okay. it's not always just saying one particular number. Um, however, you, you have resorts on Grace Bay because it's Grace Bay and right on the beach, you know, just a studio unit per night, you could be looking up to $250 per night for a rental. Okay, so and that's probably just a studio. Whereas if you're going to be in a town home, it may be, which is a two bedroom upstairs downstairs, because now it's not on the beach, it's back on the beach, you don't have all the same amenities, that may also run you at $250 a night. So, like you said, we're comparing apples with oranges. So, I don't yeah. want to just give um, basic figures like that. Most times, if customers ask, I pull the stats, pull the rentals, and be able to give them factual information about that specific unit yeah i mean and that's great too right especially if you're looking for a second home you don't mind going in the off season which i have a question about and then you rent it out during the peak season you pretty much have your monthly covered for the entire year after a few months of rentals right yeah i mean okay so then the really important thing to me to ask is what is the weather during the off peak season and when is the off peak season? So, um, so, so the peak season is usually from November to April. So anything okay. other than that will be off peak season. But I must say, because the weather is consistent most year round, we most times we're in the 80s, you know, could be in the 90s degrees right we do find that the occupancy rate generally is around 80 percent year round okay so we do always have a, a high occupancy rate um within the country when it comes to resorts now because it's COVID now it's not the same but i mean generally speaking yeah yeah wow that's that's fascinating i actually did not realize what an amazing investment opportunity you guys had in terms of Texas. this is kind of blowing my mind Especially since in the off-peak season, I could go there and it's still 80. I mean, sounds fantastic. Um, my no, other off-peak favorite... is most times the summer months. Yeah. Yeah. And if the 80s, 90s, it all depending on. Yeah. But it's tropical weather most times. What we always say is that we don't have seasons because most times it is um, um, a tropical climate here and we don't have a real winter season. That is amazing. Um, now, because it's my favorite thing, I have to ask you about the luxury home. What makes it luxury? Is it the view, the location? Does it have a pool? Is it a certain type of architecture? What really defines luxury in Turks and Caicos? Um, definitely the view, uh, because most of our luxury properties, they are beachfront properties, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you're gonna buy whether villa or condo, when you think luxury, you're expecting to be on that gray space stretch or on one of the long beach stretch or anywhere there's a very nice beach. So the view, um, the, if it's a beachfront, that's luxury. Also, most of them has a large square footage um, compared to normal. Um, also, you are thinking about, like you said, more amenities is offered in that particular unit or that home. A lot of high ceiling, a lot of contemporary look, a lot of um, open floor concept to give that grand feeling. So, and of course, high-end um, appliances um, also comes with the luxury feel when you offer something that's luxury. That's great. Do you, are there ever concerns about natural disasters when they're on the beachfront? There, truthfully, there's always a concern about natural disasters, but we um, in the Turks and Caicos Islands, our planning code is in line with like the Miami-Dade code. And we actually have protected um, hurricane-proof glass um, with all of our properties. And any property that's on the beach also have extra protected, other than the protection of the hurricane-proof 
glass. We also have hurricane shutters and everything that is all mm -hmm. protective for hurricane. Yes. Okay. And we also have protection, I mean, for hurricane insurance in the event of something like this on all condos or all homes. Okay. It's always so funny to me that some of the most expensive areas are also the most dangerous when it comes to natural disasters, right? Like the peak of the mountain yes. or the earthquake and the side of the beach. Yeah, and believe it or not, even some of the residents on Adam during the hurricane season, if we have an um, a threatening hurricane, we actually, some of us check into a hotel because we feel it's more secure because yeah. it's, it's yeah. built a code to be able yeah. to weather something like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, last question, and this is other stuff you want to talk about. Um, so you, of course, live there full round. What do a lot of the people do for uh, work that live there full year round? Well, the majority of um, persons in, in, on island um, are actually in the um, hotel and hospitality industry because tourism mm -hmm. is one of the major sectors that brings in revenue in the country. So you know, there's a large percentage who do, um, who's working in the hospitality industry. So from, mm -hmm. you know, line staff up to management, that's the majority of the jobs. Other than that, of course, there's, you know, I mean, banking opportunities and recently real estate has also been a big thing for people to get into the real estate field of recent, yeah. But the tourism sector in terms of hospitality is one of the main, um, generators when it comes to jobs on island. That makes sense. Makes sense. Awesome. All right. Well, I mean, this has been such a pleasure. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us about Tricks and Caicos? Well, nothing in particular. Just please, you are all invited to come to the Turks and Caicos Islands. We welcome everyone. We have, you know, the, the people, they are very friendly um, and I'm sure you will enjoy it. Trust me, everyone who comes here, they're so excited about coming back. And of course, you saw the video clip that I played just a little portion of. We have the best beaches um, worldwide. Yes, we do. <laughs> and I think that, um, you know, um, you should come and visit Dallas and see it for yourself. We have a lot of celebrities who come here year round. Mm -hmm. And um, if you want even retirement, anything, I think Turks and Caicos Islands is the place to be. Yeah, and after our conversation, I can say it sounds like a really good investment opportunity as well. Investment, live, enjoy, it's a great option. Yes, yes, and I think I uh, just wanna say one more thing, like I said, investing in the Turks and Caicos is a good opportunity. You have free whole tile to your land, which is a big thing, and like you said, no property taxes, I think you're spot on if you invest in the Turks and Caicos Islands. I mean, <laughs> no taxes, guys. <laughs> All right, well, listen, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for a couple of your time.